it's always tougher to shoot yourself. That should work. All right, so there are tons of ways to cook certain Filipino dishes. Um, Filipino food in general is seen as um, something that varies very differently from household to household. I can assure you that the way my mom makes adobo is very different from the way your mom makes adobo. Aras caldo is one of those dishes that is so emblematic and absolutely everyone makes, but what I've seen is that everyone makes it so differently depending on how they like to eat it. Um, so I thought it'd be really fun to ask my friends JP, who's a chef, in uh, the Philippines, and my friend Ross, who's a chef over here in Melbourne, um, to show us different ways to make Aras Caldo. Now, these are not traditional in any way. They just focus on the essence of what an Aras Caldo should be. So I'm first gonna show you how I do my quote-unquote traditional Aras Caldo. I like to use a whole chicken when making this dish. I feel this is what really helps develop a deep chickeny flavor. Next, we're gonna slice up a ton of ginger. You could mince the hell out of them, but I actually enjoy them as thin slivers. You can then opt to chew or discard them while eating the dish. To complete our Filipino trinity, some diced onions and minced garlic, of course. For a fun little topping, I like to confit some garlic, so grab a whole bulb, um, cut off the top, plunge it in water, drench it in olive oil, and season it with salt. This goes into the oven until soft. Once all your ingredients are ready, get a heavy pot out, heat up some oil, and put in your chicken, season with salt and pepper. Now this is something that I don't see a lot of people doing, but I think it adds so much flavor. Um, and that's just the sear the chicken. It just, when you put heat to chicken, if you were just gonna boil it versus stir frying it or putting it in an oven, you'll see that the flavors are very different. Once nice, brown, and tasty, take your chicken out and cook down your ginger and garlic until nicely colored. We're really gonna grab a nice kind of like burnt caramel color here. We then go in with our onions. And I put a little bit too much, so let's just remove some of that. One key thing for this recipe for me is to make sure to use glutinous rice. Glutinous rice makes a huge difference in terms of texture that you'll get from your lugao or from your aras caldo, and it's so key for me. But I also like mixing in different types of rice with it. So here I have um, half brown rice and half um, glutinous rice. So glutinous rice gives us that texture, and the brown rice gives us a nice kind of like nuttiness to the whole dish. Um, and it makes it like a bit more nutritious. For the love of humanity, please wash your brown and glutinous rice until the water runs clear. Drain it and then toss it in with the veg. Chicken goes back in, make it nice and cozy with all the other ingredients. Cover with water and broth. The ratio we are using here is one cup of mixed rice to about six cups of a water broth combo. Cover, bring to a boil, stir, leave to a simmer until more or less cooked. Usually this will take 45 minutes to an hour. Since my chicken broth is really well seasoned already, I waited until the very last minute to adjust the seasoning with some fish sauce. Make sure to use some really good quality fish sauce. I don't know what color your Ars Caldo is at home, but I like mine to be kind of like yellow. Um, and I get that from a really good quality chicken stock, but also from searing the chicken to adding lots of ginger and then finishing off with our Filipino version of saffron right at the end to give that nice orangey yellow color. Public service announcement, kasuba is not saffron. It actually comes from safflower. It is mainly used to add color to dishes and only has a really very light, mild flavor. The one you buy is also probably not grown in the Philippines, so I'm not sure where this idea of local saffron came from, but it's stuck, so I guess good job, marketing people. We're finally done. Time to plate or bowl? Anyways, fill up a bowl, add a chicken bit, and top it with your heart's desire. Some confit garlic, chives, and crunchy shallots. I don't have calamansis here in Australia. Sad face. So I'm not sure what Ross and JP did with their Aras Caldo, but this is how I expect mine to be. That yellow color and that concentration of chicken flavor. Um, crispy onions instead of putting like an egg or something. <laughs> and just how 
coagulated and swimming right now. Just how coagulated the rice is and that prominence of ginger is complete winner. Texture, comfort, everything you want it to be. Yum. Hey guys, how's it going? How's everyone doing? My name is JP and tonight we're making arroscaldo. What I'm doing is not a tradition on arroscaldo, so you can do whatever you want in terms of innovation, but the essence of an arroscaldo still has to be there. I have your frozen rice. A little bit of it I will pop in the oven, so maybe 15 minutes. I want it to be really dry. You can, in a sal, I will brush with a little bit of anato oil and I will bake this. My two day old chicken stock. So yeah, the key to a good arroscado is the stock. I will bring this to a boil, cover it with a lid. I will debone my other half of the chicken egg. So, stock's boiling, frozen rice in, frozen brown rice, put a rubber spatula, saute, uh, stir it. Well, let's add a little bit more. Let's make like a few portions. You know what, let's add the whole lot. Half of the chicken in the cell, I'll sort of like just roughly chop into the mixture. Mash up the ginger into the mixture. I got here some leeks. Normally what they do is they just use this as a garnish. This time I re uh, I want to flavor my rice broth. So yeah, keep stirring it just so that you don't burn the bottom part. And look, if you can see, it's already absorbed all that stock. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit more water here to my stock. The bones, I'm gonna put back here in the in the stock. I'm gonna put it to put it on high, but uh, kind of gets all that flavor. Then I'm gonna add a little bit more liquid here. <clears throat> put a lid on top. Ah, look at that inside. So the rice is really dry. The rice is starting to become pasty. So this is the time when it's starting to turn into a rice porridge. So we want it more drog. So maybe another another five, eight minutes. So with the egg yolks, I did. I decided not to sieve it because I still want that, you know, grainy, hard boiled egg yolky texture. Um, okay, here I put it on low already because I'm just gonna let it cook a little bit more. And while I'm waiting for that, come here. So this is the skin of the other uh, chicken in the cell. Right, so this is just a little bit of starch. Uh, this is potato starch. You can use corn starch, kamoto starch, and I'm just going to fry this. So look, it's nice and crispy. Okay, this is the color bye. I want. I got here some sliced ginger, and I'm going to fry it. Yeah, I think that's good. Like that's the color you want. Same oil, rice in. I started with a low fire because I don't want to burn it. I put it here beside the chopped ginger or the fried ginger. So it's important to have a good fish sauce. They say the Vietnamese fish sauce is really good too. Now I'm gonna give it a taste. Skin, and the sal, chili garlic, crispy rice, and then chopped ginger, and our anato oil, and then I'll add a little bit also to our chicken.
Next, I have my boy Ross. Uh, as I said, he's a chef over here in Melbourne. He was supposed to shoot this horizontally, but he shot it vertically. Great job, Ross. Um, he also has background music playing. <laughs> um, but his version is very kind of like more chefy, more restaurant style, uh, which is really cool to see kind of like that kind of application put on a, such a, a simple dish um, and definitely something I would try out at home. So make sure you do too. That was awkward. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ross. Another session of cooking. And tonight I will be making Filipino arroz caldo. Um, everyone watch out because I'm gonna kick your ass. You know, I know you're gonna give an excuse that you're a, <laughs> a new father because of your new baby, but um, there's no, no excuse. I'm gonna cook a fancy version of the arroz caldo, which is a, a very traditional Filipino dish, but I'm gonna make it a bit more um, fancy, you know, like arroz caldo that, you, that I serve at the restaurant is what I'm gonna do. Ajos means rice and caldo means broth in Spanish. So that's chicken breast onion, garlic, and some ginger. This is the, so that's that. Some shallots, some ginger. I'm gonna put a slice of spring onion. Egg yolks cured in soy. So basically it's gonna give it a firm texture and a really rich and salty soy flavor, right? We, we cure it for about an hour. This has been curing for about 45 minutes now, I think. The chicken, okay. Um, I'm gonna normally I poach it in a liquid like this. I'll show you, okay. So just soy, some ginger, some lemongrass, some garlic in there, okay? So that's been, so you push it in 20 minutes, the end result would kind of like that. This is very nice wine, by the way, by my friend Giorgio Di Maria. Very, very good wine. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, so let's start, let's start with the rice, okay? We're gonna use one cup of broken rice about four to six cups of rice, depending on, on how you cook it. Over here, so I'll show you the pot. Um, so we add the, the rice in there, okay? You have to stir that a little bit, otherwise the, the rice um, catches on fire, right? So what I have here is obviously, I'll make a little uh, salsa with the, um, with the chicken. Um, so basically, if you come over here, um, so that's just brunoise shallots, some brunoise ginger, um, yeah, and I'll add some beautiful spring onion, which I'll add now. So a bit of the salsa there, yeah. Normally I just look it by eye. Obviously I want it to have more green. Then shallot and um, ginger. Trust sugar you. cane, silver swan, sugar cane, vinegar. Touch of soy. Bit of the La Ganma crispy chili oil. Okay. And then taste, taste, taste. Mm. Good? Yeah. Fresh. So as, see that? You can see that the start the rice is starting to release the starch. I was called it's been simmering for a bit now. So I'll show you how I season it, okay? Fish sauce. Soy, about 20 ml of soy. Normally you don't really put soy now. I'm putting it anyway. Lime juice, I already squeezed some lime before. That's a touch, not too much. So the colors of the oven will be more darker, okay? Mix the soy. Perfect. So I've got my cured yolks here, right? I'll take my chicken from the poaching uh, liquid. Okay. It's nice and juicy. Just that part there. Okay. Cool. And then I'm gonna grab my arroz caldo over here. So this still is a restaurant, right? We, I don't want to. I, want, I don't want the serve to be too big. Otherwise, it's gonna look ridiculous. You know. So that that's a serve for like. I know it's small, but it's served for like for like entree and restaurant, okay? So there's chicken there. So I'll take the yolk that, that's been cured for like an hour. Look at that. You can see the, the consistency of it, okay? So 
place it like that. Cool. But now I'm gonna add a bit of a uh, crispy shallot. For me, less is more, okay? You don't wanna over overdo stuff. So all those wonderful juices from the salsa is gonna be around it. My secret weapon in this competition, Erwan, is um, smoked chicken, which is, um, it's like an umami bomb. So you basically place the chicken around it. Yes. Perfect. Okay, and then a bit of black pepper on this one here. It's high basil. So just garnish this up. And then what I do is I finish a bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil, okay? I think it uh, brings the whole dish together. I love putting um, olive oil in Asian cooking. For me, it balances it out. So that's the, uh, you'll have a look at that. Choose the best uh, product, uh, chicken product as possible. Use free range if you can. Um, use some fresh vegetables, make sure they're organic. Keep it simple, keep the flavors fresh and everything balanced out. Make sure that, yeah, you're, you have fun in cooking. A recipe is only a guide. Um, what's more important is the story behind the recipe.